Ready, ready. Are we live? 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 Are
do, do you guys happen to have headphones? Yeah. You want to pop them on? I don't know if we have a split. We don't have a split. We can just do one on one. No, we'll, we'll share headphones since we share That's everything. Right. That works. <laughs> If I can He's looking for him. All right, here we go. Go share, share my mic. Go share my mic. Mm -hmm. You got that in. in. <laughs> All right, how are we doing now? Yeah, we'll see, see it. it. We'll give it a minute. It's going it's to be a minute, I think, to see if it actually worked. Oh. I got a quick little video. Yeah, we're going to put the... I got to get a different headphone. Yeah, yeah. These headphones don't work. Don't work. Someone said that Echo has stopped. Echo has stopped? Has stopped? Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't know why there's so many things. Well, 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 Okay, we got our headphones. Okay, we got our headphones. Sharing again. Now we're sharing again. I hear you guys. I hear you guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so okay. I typed something in there and it just disappears. I saw Frankie was asking if we're in California. No, Connor and I are, <laughs> Connor and I are in uh, Colorado and Dylan's in Boise, Idaho. So no one in sunny California right now. Oh, it says we're still echoing, guys. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh yeah, he just is uh, still working it. Well, Sierra Nevadas are still tasty, aren't they? <laughs> hey, so guys, you guys can hear me, but uh, but I'm out of the feed right now, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right, so it sounds like you two are good, and uh, and they can and they can hear you. And there's and now that I'm out, it sounds like the echo's gone. So how about this? Do you guys want to just leave me off, and and I can sit here and chat with you guys? And yeah, I think that's. A... I don't need to, I don't need to be on the screen. So if folks if folks can't hear me, that way I can at least just sort of feed some questions to you guys. Yeah, it's just like racing, you know, race radio. Right, yeah, and so, it's working about it's working about as well as our race radios. Yeah, yeah. So I guess uh, I'll let everyone know at home is uh, we have Dylan, our uh, team director, on Skype with us. You guys can't see him on the screen, but um, this is a full-on race simulation here, and uh, Dylan just in our ear during the race, and uh, he's going to kind of feed us some questions too, and you guys can post questions in the uh, chat here, and we'll try to answer all of them and. Uh, Hopefully, we're going to have the stream here very soon from the start. But um, yeah, it's all good. All right, cool. Huh? 
Perfect. Well, someone says everyone, they can hear everyone. everyone still. Can hear into Dylan's ear. But yeah, thankfully, with everything going on right now, uh, Connor and I are still able to ride outside together. Uh, we do some inside riding still if the weather's um, crummy, like this weekend's going to be snowing. But um, yeah, we just go out, be smart, and ride together. Uh, we don't ride in groups, so it's just Connor and I uh, out training on the roads. And we just got back from like an hour spin the local roads around here some dirt roads so yeah it was nice there there we go sounds like we're all good oh good old sierra nevada we're drinking of course yeah pete what else hey it sounds like folks can hear me so if people can hear me out there thanks for the feedback and thanks for helping us get this dialed sorry about that uh you know it's a work in progress but i appreciate the feedback and uh, it sounds like we're rolling oh there you go Hot boy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Classic. Uh, so, hey, since, uh, since we got you two here, why don't you tell us a little bit about, about the Benchmark event, the Benchmark Twilight Cycling Classic. Uh, you guys have raced it. Uh, you guys have raced it many, many times. So, of all the guys on our team, you probably know this race as well as anybody. Uh, tell us a little bit about the event, because as, as we talked about earlier today, it's a little deceiving, right? It just it looks like a basic rectangle on paper, uh, but I, I would go so far as to say it's one of the more challenging USA crits, maybe the most challenging USA crits of the season. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, like you said, you look at this on paper, and it looks like a very very simple course, kind of like similar to a Boise Twilight, uh, dead flat, four corners, but. Um, when you're actually on the course, super, super tight, narrow uh, corners, and then you got a slight uh, false flat drag all the way up to the finish line. So um, I think this is probably one of the most underrated courses for how hard it is. Um, I think there's very few courses that we race throughout the year that is so demanding. And um, by the end of the race, we, we might have 30 guys to finish, and we'll start with over 100 people. So... Is very, very, very demanding. Yeah, I think another unique factor about this race is they are tight turns. Like most races are like wide boulevards where you can have five or six guys going into a corner. But this race, you can only have one, two guys max going through a corner. So this race starts single file and stays single file. And it's also one of the races that's on the longer end. It's like an hour and 40 minutes where... Some of our races are an hour and a half. So that extra 10 minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but mentally and physically it gets to you. Three so on I, the I, first I, lap. I 250. Just, uh, 250. To, uh, Prem on the, the first lap. You should get it. Are we up and running yet? No, not yet. Not the okay, no so, video yet. So as, Here we as go. the race it's, is, it's rolling. Is, is, is loading uh, and before the, the course is already is actually on screen, can you guys talk a little bit about, uh, let's say there's some people out there watching who, who haven't raced this race before and they want to come race uh, in, in Westchester, how would you tell them to approach this race? So uh, this particular course, how would you guys tell a rider to approach, approach this race from the amateur ranks you know, all the way up to the D1 rank? Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, on this kind of course, you want to kind of be in the mindset and not be happy with the position you're in. You're going to want to be constantly moving up, 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 up. Um, I mean, the best position uh, on this typical course would be top 10, top 15. Anything back behind that, you're going to be getting the big yo-yo effect. Um, it's very different. Like we pointed out, Boise Twilight, it looks like All a very right. similar Who's course. That, that course, you can sit in in the middle. Oh, back, there's going to be a tiny back little half, sprint for this fine. bad boy. Um, but on Thomas Gibbons, this benchmark course, if you're not in the top 15, Who's maybe top 20 like wheels, uh, you're going to spend be spending a lot more so extra energy Thomas that you don't Gibbons need to. Just grab um, so on the screen, we just started so off the race. We're just on the first lap here. So. You'll notice very, very quickly that uh, this field gets strung out even in the Thomas first lap Gibbons, and it stays like that to the end. So, yeah, I think another another thing, if you if you're just watching the race or a spectator, um, coming out of that last corner is like a slight uphill, false flat drag to the finish, and doing that for an hour and forty minutes, it definitely wears on you. And this first corner we're going through now, the pavement is also 
a little rough. Uh, if I remember right, there's bricks there, and we had a little construction zone going on. So you couldn't really see through the corner going into it. Um, so I think that caught a lot of guys off guard, especially the first few laps. And then uh, we start this race in, in the dusk, and then it, at the end, it's pitch black. So. <laughs> Hey, how how does that change the race for you guys? Starting a race when you know later in the in the season, a number of races are like that where they start in uh, in daylight and then they end in in darkness. How does that factor into this race? Yeah, I mean well, I that what, takes a lot to get, to get used to. I mean, a twilight race, race is a lot different than uh, a uh, midday race. Um, and with you starting in somewhat right, dusk going into Peloton, twilight Thomas and dark um you'll definitely it's hard to pick Ryan, a like obviously you want a, a clear lens Very but um once it gets darker the shadows from behind you is start eyes and um i think it takes a lot of years of experience to get used to a twilight crit and to be honest i feel weird not racing a twilight crit if i'm uh for doing a midday race uh <laughs> not used to all the sun and uh the different kind of atmosphere the race brings. So uh, I prefer Twilight Crit. Um, the crowds are awesome. Just the atmosphere, I feel like it just makes the course and racing even better. So we're a few laps in right now on the, on the feed, and it is remarkable to see how, how right, spread out the, the race is already. I mean, I think yeah. going around this corner race four right there into the finishing straight, and not watching not the lead riders go through, there are riders still coming through corner four, and it's a relatively short course. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a quick, I mean, I think they're just over a minute laps, and like here we see the there's already probably 10, trial. 12 guys breaking Thomas away that Gibbons. in any they're other race like this, this is a potential breakaway that could lap the field um i think there's about 10 guys and it has Impressive. all the big teams in there right now uh but it looks like some teams maybe aren't happy and try to try to bring it back early i think early in the race everyone's super motivated and can close right, down these breakaways but if this breakaway like went we like 20 minutes race. later it probably could have stuck I have a yeah, and of course, like this, uh, right now. as breakaway guys, that's that's what you want to see, right? So last year, this year the course was dry and uh, made it a little bit simple. Last year the course seconds. was wet, I think, nearly the entire race. And kind of awesome if it for, for you two, hour, those are ideal situations. But... You see that as an opportunity to get a gap and then stick it and, and keep that gap. Uh, right, like Texas what, what do you look for on a course like this when you right are now? racing for a break? Yeah, it's I mean, uh, uh, like the harder the race is for us personally, I think the better. Um, like like you said, said, we're always looking, looking for a breakaway. breakaway. And, uh, so, so when it's like single clown and strong out like that, that, that plays into our favor. favor. Um, but but we're, we're also looking for... We need a strong breakaway to get away off. You're not, not going to get, get away on this course by Well, Why? I don't want to spoil it. I guess I spoke too soon, but uh, we'll find out later. It's, it's, uh, it's very hard to get away solo on this course. Um, so, yeah, I think we're just making... We want to go when the race is really, really hard and uh, when people... Uh, I mean, they're gas. That's the last thing most people are going to want to do. So that's our time to really, really make the race hard and try to get, try to get off the front. front. And, and you guys, you guys raced it pretty aggressively. Pretty aggressively. Uh, uh, so it sounds like we've got some echo in that. But I don't, I don't think this is new. So, so see if, if uh, no, no, I, I think, I think we just brought you back. back so. So. Yeah, we brought you back in the feed, so maybe that's why you're echoing again. Oh, yeah. I shouldn't be in the feed. So, Scott, if you can, if you can bump me out of the feed, bump me out of that feed. All right, so it looks uh, like we I think it's happening. Trying to get a point. This is a points um, so Connor Sally. Yeah, but uh, going off Connor's point, uh, if it's still you know, echoing, I'm sorry, but um, grab these points. it's hard to stick a breakaway with one Texas guy. But in this course, to being super technical like this, you want a small breakaway, maybe like three or four guys. You don't want like a 15, 20 minute. 20 man break what, um, just because you're still going to be getting that yo-yo effect because uh, these corners series. are single Same file results, and if you're 20 wheels Maybe back strong, uh, it's just not going to happen the breakaway so and then the it's obviously the easier if you're strung out like that for the field to catch the breakaway the blue and red of clip bar and yeah, I'm right, right. just waiting to see if we have an echo. I think we're box. good. It sounds like we're we're good again. I think I'm bumped out of there. And on the on the screen here 
we have a power profile. I think this is uh, mine, Kevin's profile, power numbers, um, and heart rate. Uh, but yeah, you can, I mean, you can already see like this race, uh, it's either like zero watts or full gas. So you're zero watts coasting into the corner, setting up for the corner, and then sprinting full gas out of it, and then holding that power for the straightaway. So, guys, compare your power profile with this race to some of the other races that we raced leading up to this. I think we had just done, uh, was it San Rafael, Littleton, and Westchester? Yeah, yeah. So, right? yeah. So yeah, those yeah. last few races, those last few races, uh, what would what would people see if they looked at your power profiles from from some of the other races compared to this? Yeah, um, I mean, it might not sound like uh, too much of a difference, but uh, after this race, uh, since we're just so on off the gas and like through this up uphill finish, it's like super super steady the whole time. So I think after this race, we normalized right under three forty five to three fifty, um, and. Most races throughout the year, a hard race, I would say between 320 and 330. Um, but that's also a lot different because Kevin and I are trying to make the race super hard. We're trying to get off the front. We're trying to get in the breakaway. So, I mean, technically, you probably could sit in, in this field a little bit better, a little less power. But on this specific course, like if you don't have the power, you're not going to hold on to the field. So uh, I think that makes this race really, really special is that... Uh, it's really a strong man's course, and uh, you got to be really, really uh, cautious of when you use those matches and uh, breakaways and attacks. So, hey, a little, a little setup on the race too. I think we just saw one of the butcher box riders take a preem, and I know that next week uh, Steve and his crew, the butcher box guys, will be talking about this race as well. Uh, the setup going into it was that. Butcherbox and Team Cliff Bar have been bouncing back and forth, uh, battling for the team competition, first place, second place, uh, just by a handful of points. And we, we entered into this race in first place in the points with a relatively tight margin, so we knew this was going to be a challenging and aggressive race. And I believe that was a points frame that we just saw. And so the, the points frames were really key in this race, and Butcherbox did a really nice job racing for points. So with that frame, Butcher Box probably just took back some some points for the competition. Uh, a question for you two guys: You're obviously racing for the break. You're racing to uh, try to try to make the race difficult and hopefully split it and maybe get a get a top result. Uh, how much does that factor in in a race like this, where we're at the at the end of the season and the team competition is on the line, but you guys still are racing your bikes very aggressively, as are the Butcher Box guys and so many of the other riders in this race? Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, this was the USA Crit Finals last year, and Butcher Box and Team Cliff Bar, we practically won in tied, but I think, uh, or I know Cliff Bar had a slight advantage going into the race. And um, yeah, we had preem laps that go into the overall team competition. And also another thing to keep in mind, each lap, if you're leading the race, you get one point towards that competition. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you go into the race tied, are very close uh every point adds up um and yeah i think uh we obviously wanted to win the team competition and that's a big goal of the team uh we also had owen gillett in the u25 jersey and we also wanted to retain that for him um but we also want to go into the race and not just race super negative and just protect the overall lead like we want to entertain the fans have fun and try to get a win out of it and if we win the team competition in doing so, that's great, but oh, I don't man, think we so were just going right to sit Thomas back Gibbons and race defensively. Like, we wanted to make a good show that Give day. For the overall leader. He is doing the yeah, yeah, I felt like Service. going into this race, too, both teams did that. They raced aggressively, they put on a show. This was a really exciting race to to watch and, and I, I feel like what the teams have done well uh, over the last couple seasons really is go so into these events Thomas, give with the goal Harris, Connell, of, of so entertaining right and putting Thomas on a show and as the guys said like obviously we'd love to win the team competition team. but when we get so beat like in the team competition okay, pass off to the team that, that beat us and this race as a director watching the race, uh, well, <laughs> we had 
had a we had He's a crazy weekend. Like One of the hiccups we had is around last two or three when I was when I was going to try to tell He's somebody the big gap was was opening. Our race radios went south on us. So for the most part, I just watched this race. <laughs> I couldn't talk to the guys. I could just watch and. Uh, <laughs> And it was very entertaining. It was it was a super spectator friendly race, just based on how so many of the different riders were racing this race. It was attack after attack after attack. And I know at a certain point that probably wears on you guys who's watching the uh, watching the replay here. You guys are at the front a lot. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, like you said, I mean, Butcher Box played this really good, and um, like they they kept sending guys up the road, so. We, so we need to pull that back and we need to get to the front. So, um, and like just Frankie mentioned out, like this is, for Kevin and I personally, this was the last race of the season. Um, and this is already super, super late in the year. We've been racing a lot. So uh, just asking if we're tired mentally and physically. And honestly, um, no, like, I mean, I just want to keep racing. Like uh, you just get later in, later in the season and like, um, we love racing, so to be able to do this is super, super exciting. But um, I feel like this is probably one of the better races that I had all year, uh, like performance-wise, maybe not not result-wise, but just like um, how you feel on the bike, and that's always a good feeling um, that, that late in the season. Yeah, and I, right, I, for, for us right as a team, when Scott Texas asked us to chat about, about this particular race, this Trying you know, to get it, the it probably WD wouldn't Summerhill. have been the race that was the obvious one for us to talk about because I think but his we, right now, we strong. had some we, we had a rough time in this race in in certain areas and we didn't come away with with the result that we wanted but as a team we, do, we talk about that quite a bit that I mean hey right now right now I would love to be out there losing. A USA Crips <laughs> Finals. I take that in a heartbeat, you know. Totally. And, and so for us to be able to to, to watch a recap where where you know, chips didn't fall in our favor, uh, but but part of that was due right, to our competition. To, to be able to down. watch it, and talk about it, I think that's super left. key uh, for Big for really any team. You're going to go out there and race, Burger and more often than not, you're I'm not going to see necessarily Charlie all the success you fourth. want to see. But if you can find a way to, to enjoy it and just soak in the joy of being on a bike in a bike race, that's really what matters. And I felt like watching this race, As Twilight a number of our guys raced it so well and, and, and it yeah, didn't really work out go. for us. But, man, just looking at your power files, guys, it's, it's crazy the type of effort you were putting Frank, into this Frank one. Frank now. Always wanted to win this yeah, this race. one is like, I mean, you can see it. It's like Don't single file. Uh, well, we're maybe not here. even 15 minutes into this race, and I guarantee there's uh, some people already out of the race. It's just like, that just goes to show you how important, like, even um, even like a, your start position at yeah, the right now, beginning of the race, like, uh, that's one of the huge benefits Gene that we get as a USA Crit front. team is um, all USA Crit guys get called to the front of the race and like that is such a massive advantage especially on a course like this uh some other courses your start position might not matter too much like you'll be able to make it up in a few laps and get to the front and not really have to use too much energy but a course like this if if you're starting in that last half of the bit or the field just at the start line like how much energy it is just to get into those top 15 positions like uh i mean that's a race in itself is just moving up in the peloton in this race so yeah, and there's already gaps opening up at the back of the field here. I think there's already probably been a handful of guys already dropped out of their race in the first 20 minutes. Um, but also, it's like he's talking about power, but you can see my heart rate's like staying pretty steady. And that's 168, 170 is like pretty high for me. I think my max is probably like middle 180s. So I'm like just hovering around 170 right now within the first 20 minutes of the race. So. It's full gas and we're not messing around. And here you can see on the screen, there's already a few guys getting drops right now and it's and they're, they're never gonna get back on. So right now, what what's, do you guys remember what's going through your head 20 minutes into this race? Like how, at this point in the race, 
can you remember what you were thinking at this point as far as the effort you guys were putting in or where you wanted to be or what was working for you and what wasn't working for you? I just remember being super thankful to see Connor and some of my other teammates covering some of these moves because, the like I just said, my heart rate was pretty maxed already. Um, and w having teammates there cover some Connor moves selling. and kind of uh, ease the tension uh, was super helpful for me. Yeah, and I feel like at this particular race, like it starts hard, stays hard, and like uh, honestly, probably right about now, I'm probably looking at the lap counter and hoping I see ten to go or something, five to go. But uh, in reality, we probably still have an hour to go. Um, so I just knew it was going to be a super, super hard day, and we just needed to stay up front and uh, do the best that we could. I knew it was going to be very dwindled at the end of the race, so if any anything that we can do to help the team cover moves, stay up front, get creams, try to get off the front. Like, uh, I mean, that's a small victory in itself, but uh, you almost have to break up the race into sections and just to like get through it mentally. Yeah, and it looks like now we jumped up a little or a little ahead. We're like 39 laps to go. Super dark. Uh, there may be 50, 60 guys left in the field, but really like 20 guys racing this. Uh, like Butcher Box is attacking now with two guys so um it's getting super aggressive and towards the last half of the race so we have to be on our a game now and try to cover any move or jump in any like threatening breakaway all right here they come to the line so when, when the race is going this hard this long and there aren't really noticeable balls in the in the race how do you how do you play your cards if you're still hoping for a break. Like at what point in this particular race there, do you just kind of lose hope that a break's really going to stick? Do you, you take mm. that to the very, very end? Yeah, this, yeah. yeah, I mean, I would take... Yeah. I would never give up on a breakaway. I mean, that's when that's when you hope people that have that mindset right now, and that uh, think, like oh, we're only five laps to go, there's no way a breakaway is going to stick. But that, that, in reality, is probably maybe your best chance and people are waiting for the field sprint and for Kevin and I, like, that's kind of what we want, and we want their uh, thoughts to be like that. And so we're trying to get in a breakaway in this whole race. Uh, I don't care how late into it it is, but, uh, I mean, then in reality, you see so many so many moves going up the road and just bring them back, bring them back. So it's kind of demoralizing. It's like, well, maybe it's not possible on this course. It's not possible tonight, but uh, you just got to keep going. Hey, I'm, I'm not uh, on on the feed on on YouTube. Butcher box. If we get any questions, but are, are we seeing any? Is there anything you guys want to respond to? I can't check it right now. Yeah, no, no. I think we're pretty much caught up on all the chats that I see on my end on the on YouTube, but. Um, so, for those out there who are so watching, uh, by all means, if you have questions for Kevin Connor, uh, let them rip, and uh, these guys these guys will answer them uh, as best they can. I know Owen sent something about sunblock. He had a sunblock question, but it didn't. <laughs> Wait, for us or for him? Like if we wear sunblock <laughs> during a twilight race? So, my guess is that... Uh, yeah, that like always it starts at dusk, so the sun's points. still out, and uh, you can still see your shadow at night, so... Uh, Always be wearing get a moon burn. So we still get those. So one of the notes I have is just about variables on race day, like all the, the many things that, that can happen in a race like this, like actual race course variables. Uh, what at this race and at other races, what are some things that, that are on your mind when when, when you're racing and maybe hoping to avoid things that can get in your way as a bike racer. I'm going to guess the lead right now that Cliff Bar has. Is um, I don't know if you're referring points. to something here, no, but... Um, points. Well, I'll get to that one. That's okay. a major, awesome yeah. variable. You saw but uh, I'm thinking more like when you're racing, right so racing this hard, like, are you concerned about just overdoing it and not being able to I recover? Like, what, what are you... And that's not so much a variable. Uh, but in some cases, like last year, with the course being wet, that's definitely there, gonna cause how many guys crashed out of the break? So I like, didn't the, didn't the break points. crash in so the wet. You know, so so going into a dry race like this at uh, <laughs> uh, at Westchester, what? You, t tell me a little bit about what what you might be on the lookout for uh, as as you approach a race like this, knowing the course and knowing what's happened here in the past. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, like, there's just like, so many factors to go into it, but, uh, like you mentioned, like, crashes, like, uh, I mean, that's the last thing we're thinking about, uh, I feel like if you're thinking about that, even going into a corner full gas, uh, you might not come out on the other end, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, um, Yeah. Uh, so we, we we can jump from that into the, like the larger variable of the day for us. We got a pretty ridiculous story at the time. It was it, at the time it was super stressful and probably not, not all that great. But uh, but I, I think we all knew that it would quickly turn into one of our our favorite race day stories. But it was it was it was a little crazy. Uh, why don't you start? How does it all start off, Kevin? Tell us a little bit about that morning. I knew something was wrong when he just uh, when he just looked at me. So yeah, so we we flew in. Was it the, it was the night before, right? Yeah, uh, we just we just finished dinner at our host house, um, and we started building our bikes. Uh, and I started building my bike and realized that I forgot to pack my fork in the bike bag. Um, and I kept looking through, and I was like, ah, oh, it's got to be in here somewhere. But then I remembered. I actually started using another bike bag but that weekend and I left the fork in that bike bag instead of putting it in with the frame. And I still remember telling the guys like, no, you guys have an extra fork, do you? And they're like, no, why? And I was like, oh, no. And I remember walking over to you. You were chatting up at the host house, just finished dinner, drinking a Sierra Nevada probably. And I'm like, like walking up to a disappointed dad to tell you like, Dale and I... I messed up, and you're like, what's happened? I was like, I left my fork. And you're like, no, you didn't. You're joking, right? And I was like, I really wish I was, but I do not have a fork. Um, So I think right away we went trying to figure out how to get a fork for the next day. Uh, We were asking bike shops, but it was late at night. Uh, We were in contact with Envy to see if they had any dealers locally. Um, But you, in my eyes, were super calm. Uh, we're like, you're like, we'll reassess this in the morning. We'll get up early, get some coffee and breakfast, and we'll go to the bike shops and get you a fork. Don't worry about it. And I was like, oh, okay. And I still remember messaging my wife, like, I left my fork at home. She's like, oh, I can overnight it. And I'm like, no, we race tomorrow night. It's not going to be here in time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what happened. Uh, the next morning, we woke up, had breakfast, and you and I hopped in the truck. We searched some bike shops, um, went to a couple of them. Uh, and then uh, Again, I think the most important we hit a few, and they said no. And then we found a bike shop that was like an hour away, maybe, that they said they might the have a fork for us. So you're like, all right, let's so give it a shot. And I'm like, all right, let's, let's do it. And this is race day. But and uh, I was like, this has to happen or I'm not going to be racing. Um, so, yeah, we started driving around. We were in the country roads of Pennsylvania. And I was like, we dro- or you drove by the bo- like a barn. And you're like, that's a bike shop. Let's stop. And yeah, it was the, uh, it was the bicycle barn. So a shout out to the, the and bicycle barn and, and, the, and it's just bike shops everywhere. Blood right they now. they oh. saved our day. So and yeah, keep, keep rolling, job. keep rolling, Kevin. But yeah, I remember I was looking, I was looking at my phone on Google. We we're still like thirty point. minutes away from the shop we were planning on going to, and uh, we drove by this barn, and you're like, "There's a bike shop," and I was like, "What?" I was like, "No, we're thirty minutes away," and you're like, "No, that said bicycles." And you're like, we have to give it a try. And uh, all I'm thinking is like, yeah, and we're in the middle of nowhere. They're not going to have the fork we need. Like, let's just go to the one that's 30 minutes away and get it for sure. And you're like, no, 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 let's go in. And we went in. There's a few customers in there. And the the owners were like right there and super, uh, super nice and told us they'd help us here in a moment. And then you explain the situation. And they're like, oh, we might have some old ones. And. They started going down in the basement and pulling out old forks, and you're like, no, that won't work. No, that won't work. And I had no idea. I'm just like, Dylan knows what he's looking for. And then he's like, the owner's like, well, just come down in my basement, and we'll take a look. And he starts pulling forks from the rafters, and you're like, no, no. And then you're like, oh, that one might work. And uh, then you and him just started building it in the bike shop. 
Yeah, it was it was it was nuts. I I, uh, I will always fondly remember that day. I was, it was super Kata fun Sally to see it all come together and to find the parts that we needed. It was sort of magical. And really, when this race started, when this race started, I, probably more than anything, I was just so happy that we had six riders at the start line. Because earlier that Me morning, too. it seemed super unlikely. Uh, so as this race was going, and when I radioed out, it was pretty easy to roll with, with all the punches today in, in Westchester during this race. <laughs> it's been such a ridiculous day. Uh, but it's a little look sometimes at you know, what, what so many teams probably have to deal with to get to the starting line. I'm sure we are not the only team that has some crazy race day stories. And when it all comes together, especially when, when a local bike shop helps, helps you get to the starting line, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's, it's one of my fondest memories from, <laughs> from the USA Crit season. Yeah, and I guess, okay, so I, I guess feeding off that, though, like when you said that if there's any factors into the race, I think going into that race, I mean, I trusted you that the fork was going to be fine and intact, but I think in both of our heads, the back of our heads were like, uh, we hope this works. But after two laps of ripping around, I was like, all right, we're, we're game time. Let's go. Yeah, no, it was, it was good. And the, the shop was great. And the, it, it, it worked out. And you were, you were tearing it up this race. So you're now on the course. Where, uh, where are we in, in the feed right now? What, what lap do you think we're at right Looks now? Looks like I, see it. Uh, we're 32 laps ago. Uh, Butcher Box, I think Connor is probably five seconds off the front um, with uh, it might be a cliff bar rider chasing. Yeah, good, Zach. Um, yeah, Zach trying to close it down. But yeah, 32 laps to go. So 32 minutes probably left of racing or just a hair under. Yeah, and we got a question about like um, kind of how we keep check of where our teammates are like uh, personally in the in the race. Um, and then especially with uh, – our race radio is going out on lap two. It's a little bit more difficult to kind of communicate, but um, everyone on the note on the team knows where to be, what they got to do. So like, really, I'm not really too concerned about where everyone is. Like, um, I mean, Kevin and I don't need radios personally, cause we can just uh, communicate with that. Mind now. Um, but uh, we're all trying to get in that top 10, top 15 wheels. And I know if I can cover some sort of move and, it comes back. I know someone else on the team is going to be right there, right behind me or very, very close. So like, I mean, it's not like I'm turning around, looking around for my teammates or anything. And like, just like small little like communications between like one another of our teammates. Like if I come up on Kevin or Zach or some like Zach here, here I'm on your wheel or something like that. Just so, so that we know like who's around us and all that. So yeah. And we're always communicating too, like how we're feeling and, uh, if we have like a race plan going into it, like if we have someone trying to get in a breakaway and it's not happening, like we'll communicate like, hey, I'm not feeling well. I'm going to cover the next move or something like that. But that might may be it. So we're always communicating um, and it may not look like we're right next to each other all the time. But going into corners of stuff, it bunches up just a hair and we can talk a bit then. Hey, so. As far as as far as the, you guys had mentioned, experience of this race it plays a pretty big role, and I, I think we had, I think three of the guys there this year had raced in Westchester before, and then three of our riders was it their first year racing in Westchester? Is that right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, so yeah. from the experience side, as we were as we were this race and preparing on Saturday afternoon, what uh, what type of conversations did you have with the guys who hadn't raced here before? Yeah, I mean, we're just like obviously talking about previous years and how we think this race is going to pull uh, pull off. So like. We're just letting them know that this is probably going to be one of the hardest races that we do all year. Our position is crucial. If you can move up, move up. Uh, if there's any sort of surge, move up. If if you're gassed and it just eases up a little, just move up one or two guys. So it's like just to get that communication through. I mean, when we when you even pre-ride the course, it's like, oh, this, this won't be bad. I can move up here. I can move up here, move up there. But in reality, when it uh, comes down to race time and how the race is playing out, there's very, very few places that um, you're going to be able to mu move up. So just like communicating to all the guys, like uh, be prepared for one of this is going to be one of the hardest races we do all year. So Yeah, and it's obviously the last race of the year, so we don't have to 
hold anything back. Not that we ever do, but uh, everybody knew that they had to put everything into this race and realized how hard this race was going to be. I mean, maybe some of them didn't actually realize how hard it was going to be until they got into the race, but... Yeah, and you, and you guys mentioned earlier how important uh, the start line is in this race, and in many races that's not the case. So, in this particular race, it's more like it's it's almost like a cyclocross race in that sense that, that your start position is just so crucial. And I think I think it's super easy to tell people that, but it's sometimes it takes one race to really understand. Like, okay, yeah, all right, I get it. That, that start position really is is pretty important. Uh, how many races during the course of the USA Crits season do you guys factor in uh, starting position? I mean, honestly, um, well, probably at least half of them, right? Um, if not more, like your start position is very, very crucial. There's very few races that um, I'd be happy with, like starting in the middle towards the back of the field. Like, um, so, yeah, I mean, it's very, very crucial. And, like, me personally, if I were in that position, and sometimes it happens. Like, I mean, there's uh, races that, for some reason, we might start back. Um, and me personally, I treat those first 10 laps almost like the last 10 laps of the race. If I'm that far back, like, uh, I mean, obviously, you're being smart with moving up and all that, but I'm going to use those first 10 10 laps as my last 10 laps to get to the finish. And because once I get to those top 15 wheels, I'm going to be safe. Front is the most crucial thing. And and really in this race, you need to spend energy to stay at the front. Or other races, you, you can float probably top 15, top 20, but there's not a lot of floating in this race. So, I mean, it's full gas right now. And uh, on the video, it's like right now, Butcher Box is off the front again with five seconds or so and a cliff bar rider on the front trying to close it down and put your box sitting right behind the cliff bar rider so um they're burning matches we're burning matches and then there's some other uh teams in the race obviously that are just waiting to pounce uh right now it looks like an atomic guide bridging up to butcher box uh it must be a preem going into a preem right now oh automatic or atomic yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old Gibbons. Gibbons. Yep, yep. Looks familiar. He yeah. a good race here. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, right yeah. Now, that's, that's, that's the field right now, huh? That's it. That's all we got. That's yeah, yeah. I mean, it's where you, uh, we're at least half the field. 27 laps left, maybe 40, 50 guys max. Uh, Gibbons is off the front. Um, people are asking about the road quality, and uh, at night, there, there are some potholes in this race, and a few of the corners have bricks going into it. Uh, we're going into the downhill now into corner three, and most of the race are spent on the right hand of the side in the gutter, and I remember this backstretch being kind of choppy and bumpy here. Uh, and then going into the corner, I think there's a bump or a hole or something in the apex of the corner, and this is a narrow, tight turn. So you had a... This is the one corner where it's like one guy through the corner at a time. Uh... And Gibbons just came through corner four. Oh, speaking of, there, there's a crash now in corner three. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Like, uh, actually, I went down a sec. But uh, I think last year was the first year that they repaved the start finish. So, oh, previous yeah. years, that start finish falls flat, drags to the uh, finish line, which is like really, really rough. So, um, this year it was almost butter. So, it made the race even, even faster. So, um, but this crash uh, happened just because you're coming into that third corner so fast. It's so narrow. It's so rough on the inside. So it's so easy to take that corner from the inside to the outside. And if you have, for some reason, three to four guys wide, they're not going to fit. And uh, and you can't see cool. outside of that corner going into it. So it kind of closes in on you. Yeah. So, Connor, you go down in a crash like that at this point in the race. Uh, it was so fast. What's going through your mind? So, where, how, how do you how do you handle that? Like, how, what what are the steps you take to get yourself back in the race? Yeah, I mean, once I fell over and my whole body just cramped. Once I got over that part, um, like you just obviously got to check yourself over, see if it's smart to get back in the race. Like, uh, we're all competitors and we're gonna want to race no matter what. So you got to be smart when it comes to that. But uh, 
you just get to the pit, make sure everything's working fine, like, uh, try to be as calm as possible, right? Like, uh, with uh, the one lap rule that you get for uh, crashing, like, helps tremendously. So I'm not technically going to lose uh, positions, but um, once you get back into the race, just you got to be able to get the mindset of that crash out of your head, because if you now just keep on thinking about crashing the rest of the night, then uh, your race is over. So... Uh, you just gotta kind of get back, get back in the mindset, and then just get back to the front as soon as possible. Like uh, you can see right here, this was perfectly timed uh, by Travis. So there was a crash, kind of everything is kind of uh, like a washing machine right now. No one really knows what's going on. Everyone's trying to find their teammates and what's going on in the race. And so I think this was a perfectly timed, uh, perfectly timed attack. Yeah, and I think another thing too to think about, like. For me, when I have Connor or a teammate crash, that also plays into how I'm going to race that next lap. Like, I don't want to be making it super, super hard when the, these guys are getting thrown back in for a free lap because it looks like in this crash, I was the only cliff bar rider that probably didn't go down or were behind the, involved in that crash. So I'm the only one in that in that race. Also, when Traviesa went, uh, I just couldn't go with him. So... Travis has a small gap now, and it's Butcher Box and Cliff Bar on the front, um, trying to bring him back. But there's less than 30 guys left in the field with 25 laps to go now. <laughs> wow. So, how, Kevin, did you know who went down in the crash? So, in this case, obviously the field's smaller, but with the radios not going tonight for this particular night. How did you know that you were you might be solo for, for a lap uh, and, uh, and to kind of chill for a little bit until you had your teammates back? Yeah, I think it's important to, like, like it is hard to look around when you're racing. Lives. You want to keep your eyes straight ahead, especially after a race happened. You don't want to cause another crash looking back to see who went down. Um, but going, going into each corner, each lap, you kind of have a general idea of where your teammates are in the race. And if I knew that crash probably happened 20 wheels back and in that area, I was like, oh, we probably have a few guys sitting right there. So I don't know for sure that they go down, but they're not up next to me and I don't see them for that lap going around. So I just, it's a general idea that they possibly went down or, or caused behind it or crashed behind it. So. So you got a mind mail. Yeah, lots of mind mail, especially in the radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, as, you, um, as you guys are watching, I'm sorry, as you guys are watching the race unfold here and you're watching uh, the breakaways go and the solo attempts go, uh, who, who is, as guys in this race, who do you feel really animated uh, the race in Westchester this year? You know, obviously there were a lot of guys making efforts and, and going off the front, but when you think back to it, the four or five riders who really stick out in your minds who, who made this race a special race. Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, Travier. So, I mean, he's, uh, he's on, he's out there by himself or with a very few teammates. So he raced this very, very smart and we knew he was a threat going into the race. And then, uh, Obviously, every single one of the Butcher Box riders, I mean, I feel like anywhere I was in that race, I was surrounded by two or three of them at least, so um, they're also a threat, and then obviously the overall leader, Thomas Gibbons, and his team, uh, he's also a super, super aggressive rider and wants to get up the road and win, so I feel like um, between the three of those teams, uh, they're kind of the bigger teams that I'm worried about getting up the road without one of us in it. So um, that's why I'm looking out for. Yeah. And uh, Frankie just asked a question. Like, did we think that Frank was going to stick, stick it all the way to the end or he was going to bring it back. And right now he probably has like 15 seconds. There's probably 30 guys left in the race. Butcher box still has five or six guys. I think we have three or four. So I think with 22 laps to go, like, a single rider on Travier, so is super strong, and he's a breakaway specialist and can sprint. But honestly, I didn't think he was going to stay away at this point um, with two full squads still racing for the overall and the win. So it was it was a great move by him, and uh, I'd like to see his power profile from this. <laughs> hey, so if you were in his shoes right now, if one of you guys was in his shoes and you had this gap at this point in the race, how would you ride this course? Like, where, what, 
Well, how would you play your cards right now if you were him with this guy? I mean, if I were him, like, obviously you're going to keep full on, uh, full gas and, like, not look back. But um, you're also going to look for any spot where you can save any sort of uh, energy. And, like, through this start finish right now, I mean, your full gas is the hardest part of the course besides the corners. And now you take the Peloton out of the race and it's just you going through the corners. So you can go through these corners so much more smooth. You don't have to spend energy accelerating out of every corner. So the place that you're going to save energy by yourself as a solo rider is on that backside. It's a, it's a downhill fast run into the third corner. So, um, that's the one and only place that you're going to save energy besides taking these corners solo. Yeah. And I think, uh, obviously he timed this breakaway very well. Uh, this is, I think maybe the first attack he did all night. Yeah. Um, so he, I mean, with butcher box and cliff bar and Gibbons attacking like the first half of the race, like, I think he waited for his time and attacked at the perfect timing. Hey, so with that, looking back at this race, would you guys uh, would you guys have raced this race any differently, knowing how it ended up playing out? And obviously, you know, it's, it's easy to make that call now. Sure. But when when you replay it in your mind, is there anything you would have done differently last year? Uh, I mean, for Frank to go. <laughs> <laughs> Just sit on Frank the whole time. I mean, honestly... Like Kevin and I being such aggressive racers and one always one in the break and honestly the chances on this long of a race uh, going in the first 20 30 minutes is very very slim but like even if I tell myself I'm gonna wait till the 40 minute mark or something like that's it's realistically it's not gonna happen so um, but if I could do it differently and I could be patient for for once in a race like uh, obviously I'd hold back a little bit but. I mean, at this specific race, there's no way uh, you could sit back with Butcher Box, how aggressive they're racing. Like, we need to be on our A game. We need to be at the front. We need to cover moves. We need to attack. So, so like, technically, we couldn't have played the cards that uh, Frank was playing. But um, if I could, yeah, that would be ideal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I think I think we had uh, I think we had pizza and beer. Did we with Frank afterwards, or he stopped by? And did, did you guys chat with him after the race? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, At Iron so, Hill. Yeah. So, what was his recap of it? Like, what did, what did he have to say about it? Did he? Oh, I still remember that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I still remember him coming up to yeah. me and like um, saying who was number seven and. Uh, I was like, uh, I didn't want to admit it because I, I didn't know if I did something wrong or if I was in trouble. And he's like, who was number seven? And I was like, oh, that was me. And he's like, oh, you did an incredible race. You were just on the front the whole time. And I was like, well, you're the one that won. So you had, like, an insanely good race. But, uh, I mean, it's really, really cool, like, to see the camaraderie between the teams and riders, like, in the race and especially after the race. Like, we're all just having fun. And uh, so it's really, really cool. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, well, he's we're at, um, I was going to say we're at 19 so laps to go, and Frank probably has a whole straightaway now. Um, so I think at this point, a lot of guys are thinking this breakaway is going to stick, and there's a couple guys trying to bridge across, but he's already at 20 seconds. So I think what happened in the race now is Butcher Box and Cliff Bar are just riding the front, but we're not sending any guys across to try to bridge to Frank. Um, not that we didn't want to, but I think we were all pretty tired at this point. And that's kind of demoralizing when one rider has 30 or 40 seconds in and there's only 19 laps to go. And this is probably the widest the Peloton has been all race. They're probably like three or four wide. So we didn't give up, but we're, I think at this point we're like, Frank's going to stick it or lap us. Yeah. And, uh, they bring up a good question is with like these preem points. Obviously, you're getting uh, one point per lap, and we were talking about that before with Butcher Box. Like uh, early on, grabbing almost all of those uh, early preems and uh, lap points. So for us now, um, I mean, if if it wasn't Frank and if he wasn't so far up the road, this would be a good position for us because those those uh, preem points are getting taken up by another rider. And um, so a rider that might not be in the overall. So that takes a little stress off our, our shoulders. But then again, like uh, 
we're also here to win the race. So the cream points, like, I'm not really too worried about, and, uh, but because you'll get more points on the finish line, so. So right now we're we're coming into how, how long are the laps uh, at this race? How long is just over just over a minute, or maybe yeah, just yeah, under a minute. And there's 18 laps to go now. If Frank has like 30 seconds alone, maybe one guy chasing in between. And yeah. are these are these the shortest laps of uh, of the season? They are, I think. They might be, yeah. They're or at quick. At least the U.S. Secret season. Yeah, special. they're quick. They go around fast. And yeah. So, so right now you're getting down to close to 15 minutes to go as a bike racer. What, what starts to feel manageable to you after a race that's this long? So you've got short laps, you've been working super hard. At what point do you see a number on that lap card where you're just like, oh yeah, I, I can do this. I, I can find that. What, it's not even a second wind. It's like a 20 second wind. Yeah. I mean, like, um, when I see 15 or 10 laps to go, I'm happy. Um, like if I'm in a good position, then, uh, I'm super happy with how the race has gone on. But then, then say we get down to five to three laps and, um, that's kind of when I get scared cause I'm not like a pure sprinter. So like just being able to hold my position on a really, really fast course, luckily, uh, benchmark being such a hard race, like the, the chances of us coming down to a field sprint, even in the Peloton, it's going to be so shattered. So like, that's perfect for us. Like. So with three laps to go on this kind of course, like I'm super, super excited. If I'm in the top 10, top five, like I know we're going to have a good result. Like, uh, but yeah, I'll say on this specific course, I'll be happy to see five laps to go. Yeah. We're probably an hour, 20 minutes in or so, I would say. So 20 minutes left in the race. I think you get super motivated in a second win, like you said, um, yeah, last 20 minutes. Uh, this is, this is the race. So we're either going to bring back the breakaway or try to send one guy across, but I think it's you, me, and Zach maybe right now. So we have three guys, and Butcher Box might have five or six riders still. So we don't really want to be just riding the front and trying to bring it back. And we really did not have the energy to jump 30 seconds to Travier. So at this point, so it looks like um, Butcher Box may be getting towards the front now. Um, but Frank's coming through with 15 to go. And at any point during the last, like, 15, 10 laps, did you guys see an opportunity to try to jump? Did you see that, that gap come down? I can't really recall. It seemed like Frank stuck it and held it. didn't really get a whole lot closer during, during the end of the race, but I can't, I can't remember. Do you guys remember? Yeah, no. Um, with, like, 10 laps to go, I was still blown away that he had that kind of a gap in, like, any sort of acceleration in these last 10 laps feels like, I mean, impossible. So, like, um, if anyone were to even attack right now, it, like, it would be so hard to even cover that. So, uh, no, I don't think I saw, like, any sort of chance to get across to Frank. And, uh, I mean, that totally changes your mindset then, right? Like, uh, the wind's away and and you know, you know it's out of grass, but uh, you're still trying to make it the best race. Obviously, we're going to still try to race aggressive, but um, you can see here that there's, what, four or five butcher box guys at the front, and so that also is kind of good for us because they have a majority of their teams still there in the race, and, like, they can help control it and try to help bring Frank, and then if we can at all... Uh, hand up some sort of help to i mean like at this point us and butcher box like uh we kind of become not rivals anymore and we're trying to bring this race back so one of us can try to win the race so we're going to try to work with them to try to bring frank back and you guys have both mentioned that you don't consider yourselves sprinters so so as you hit 10 to go and and, and you're, you're still in, in a relatively small group, but you're still in the group, and there's a rider up the road. How do you start playing out your options? Like what do you, how do you start considering the different options you might have and how this race can, can come to a finish for you? Yeah. Uh, this race is unique in a lot of ways, but um, not being a sprinter per se, uh, I think the – Really, like, one lap to go, you're not going to move up to maybe in five to go. You're really not going to move up any positions. And the race is to that third corner. 
pretty much what you go into that third corner is what you're going to finish. I mean, you may be able to move up one or two through that last corner to the start finish, but just holding position is like super important for us. Uh, and it's not, it's not wide open. So you don't have a lot of guys swarming you where like the sprinters are kind of maybe used to getting swarmed and controlled and not being a sprinter. I think that's what spooks a lot of riders. So having this ride or this race single file, uh, helps you to stay in position really. Yeah. And then, um, uh, Frankie kind of just, threw up a few questions here just like kind of what we eat before a race and then kind of talking about the end of the race and with this being one of the longer races uh on the calendar like uh our our, our fuel and meal going into this kind of race is very crucial so um at uh i want to be eating three hours before this kind of race um either if that's like a burrito bowl rice some sort of rice or pasta or something like that i almost treat it to like back in the day when i used to race some road races like i'm trying to get as much fuel in in me as possible and then like um for this kind of long race i'll probably bring two cliff gels and uh a half a sleeve of blocks and that's a lot of food to consume but we're also burning a lot of calories in this kind of race uh some other races that are a little easier to sit in i mean honestly i'd probably just have uh one cliff gel so um yeah i mean fuel is very very important on this kind of race and then he's also kind of asking about what who and what sprinter we're kind of looking for at the end of this race and to be honest if there's a pure sprinter still in this race at this point like that's the wheel i'm gonna want um obviously gibbons he's an extremely strong overall rider and sprinter so if I can get on that, but me not being a sprinter, I don't want to be on the sprinter's wheel because uh, I'm not going to be coming around him. So I want to be as far in front of any sort of sprinter left in the field uh, as possible. Yeah. And I think with this like technical approach, the finish, like it's very helpful to have a familiar face around you or someone that you trust that knows that they know how to handle a bike. I mean, this late into the race, everyone obviously knows how to handle their bike, but um, just having a familiar face and following a guy like Connor or one of my teammates going into these last few corners is, is a wheel that I'll feel comfortable with and like be in the right mental side. Hey, back to, uh, back to just taking a nutrition, uh, in a race like this, it starts this fast and, and, and goes fast for a long time. When can you eat? So at what point in the race do you guys feel like you can have a gel or, or grab your water bottle? You know, is this a little bit different than in many of the races you do during the course of the season in terms of when you can access your nutrition? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the opposite. Like um, on this downhill might be your only option to move up. And that's kind of when it like fans out. So I'm not trying to take my hands off the bars or eat during that time. I'm trying to take advantage of that point where maybe some people are sitting up. So I'm going to try to move up the field as much as possible going into those corners. And uh, honestly, on this specific course, when I'm taking a gel, it's through coming up through the start finish when it's single file and like a kind of a false flat. And there's a lot of power on the pedals, obviously not going into the corner or anything. So I say coming out of that uh, fourth corner before the finish line is really, honestly, the only time uh, you could take a take any food on. Yeah, it feels like one of the courses where I see gels hanging out of riders' mouths for long periods of time. Unlike a lot of courses, and not just you guys, but riders in the course who clearly want to take in some food, but. Like you said, they, they're, they're not in a position where they can take their hands off the bar, so it's just hanging there, and they're waiting for that, that opportunity, and that opportunity can be super short. So you got yeah. to get the, the food in when, at, at whatever opportunity you can. That uh, Actually, funny, that reminds me, because on this specific uh, race, uh, <laughs> I took a, I took a cho chocolate gel going through the start-finish line, and uh, obviously you don't eat it... Uh, it might be in your mouth for a little bit and then going into the third corner is when I crashed. And so then I had kind of chocolate gel and I still remember me and Zach were both in that crash and like, he thought I was just covered <laughs> in blood and I'm just like, <laughs> and I was like, I oh, know. Yeah. Down, down to right now we have like 11 laps to go and Javier is still off the front with 
like 30 or 40 seconds and now butcher box guy is actually jumping across or trying to jump across so he's like five seconds off the front so now that puts us in the back foot and we have to get to the front and chase or try to send a guy across um there's a few other teams on the front now trying to bring back uh the butcher box rider um but yeah it's it's going into 10 to go now so it's it's the final 10 here so, and this was like a, I mean, a really good move. You see a majority of their team up at the front, and uh, we have two or three guys in that top fifteen. And it's been a long race, and uh, we're kind of fully gassed at this point. So they're definitely racing super, super smart here. And I mean, they're racing for second place and a lot of points. I mean, they're racing for the overall USA Crits team overall here. So. Um, just to see them go up the road and just like try to get to the front, put any sort of energy out, it uh, it was really really tough. Yeah, no, and knowing that we go to the front and we go to the front and try to bring it back, that we only have one or two guys left for the finishing sprint. So uh, yeah, we're in a tough position here. Um, but yeah, we have ten to go, and that Frank's still way off the front, and this guy still has five seconds or so. Alex crashing. Alex. Um, but yeah, someone also asked uh, kind of recovery too, and um, recovery is a big part. Like uh, especially the twilight races. Yeah, especially these twilight races, and if there is a race the next day, I mean, obviously this is the last race of the season, so I mean that's a little different. But it's uh, some simple as like a recovery shake. Luckily, Cliff Mar makes some recovery mix that we can use. But other than that, like uh, I don't know, just. Big burrito or some pizza and like um, I mean we're it's not like we're uh, very strict on our diet I mean uh, but uh, yeah we just go out and enjoy it have a good dinner afterwards um, the, the challenge sometimes there will be if you're coming back from Spartanburg and yeah. trying to get back to Athens we've had we've had meals really late on on Friday night and and your options are pretty limited sometimes so. So you so you want to eat, but uh, but you have to search for for the food that works for you and you're super picky. Uh, but you guys seem like you did a good job with with your post race. I think going into the race, everybody knew that Cliff Bar and Butcher were trying to battle for the team competition. So if I was a, another, it's forty seconds now, and Alex is probably behind him. Watch the race like like the replay i get to see it from a different perspective and and i'm stoked for the guys who are making the moves and and making it work that's a that's a fantastic move by our rider frank to, to win this race that's the move he has to make and the fact that he made it when he made it and you know he took advantage of maybe the the chaos that happened that lap but i would guess that he went earlier than he wanted to go i bet he saw his opportunity went when he when he knew he had a shot at it and then he found himself out there and somehow managed to stay away for the win. I mean, that's hats off, right? I mean, hats off to, to a rider who can make a move like that. And I think it comes back to the, to, to how, how close the riders are. I mean, we, we root for each other. And obviously, you know, we want to be successful as a team. But I, I believe that a number of these teams, you know, they, don't, they don't go into these races with a win-at-all-cost attitude. Obviously, we want to be successful, we want to do well, we want to have fun racing our bikes, but really that's that's first and foremost for, for this program and I think for many others is that we love bike racing. You know, I, I love seeing these guys in action. It's super fun to come to one of these races in person. Probably most of the viewers out there have seen these races in person, but if you haven't seen a big USA Crits event live, it's it's something that you should take in because it's, it's just such a blast. The crowds in Westchester are awesome. The finishing straight is super loud. Oh, yeah. In these last 10 laps, are you guys so gassed and, and just on the rivet that you can't appreciate the crowds? Or at this point, can you guys soak that in a little bit? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, uh, just looking at, like, pictures or just watching this feed right now and seeing how many people are there kind of blows my mind because uh, – we're obviously on our limit and we're focused so much on this race. Like, obviously we can hear all the noise. Like you can kind of hear Cliff Bar or Connor Kevin every now and again throughout the course, but you don't really know who or where it's coming from. But just like, you just hear going through the start finish, just a wall of noise. But like 
honestly, me personally, I don't know how many people there are. Like seeing these these videos and photos are like so cool to see how many people are actually at these events. And then, I mean, it's really cool after the race. Like here at Benchmark, there's the Iron Hill Brewing uh, Company that like majority of the teams go to after. So it's like really really cool for. The team atmosphere, everyone can hang out, but also for any fans watching, like just to come up and have a beer with us and talk about their race. I think it's like uh, like any unlike any other sport. So yeah, and I think I think last year at at uh, Westchester in 2018, I think Westchester might have been where we sort of cemented the lead in the team standings and the other teams we were competing with. And I remember them coming up and congratulating us. And just the sportsmanship of it all is it, it's really cool to see. And here in 2019, uh, things were flipped. And we were, we were the team that was second place on the podium. And the champagne that gets sprayed still tastes good, but it doesn't taste <laughs> quite as good if you're not the one spraying it. Uh, but, you know, but... But again, you, know, you find you find the, the people you're racing against, and and there are high fives, and there are hugs, and there there are congratulatory comments shared uh, for for a season a really really well raced. And man, I I cannot tell everybody how much I look forward to being being back to a place where where you know we can high five and and hug our opponents at the end of the season and. I mean, while you watch this race, and it brings it brings all that back. Like these guys said, the end of this race, pretty special time. And USA Prince, you know, great great job on our finals. I think Westchester was a fantastic place to have finals. Uh, what was the date on this one? Was it September fifteenth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was late. Was like yeah and, and Dylan, right now with, on the the feed, uh, that was just a points lap with five deep, and I think. Um, Butcher Box just got second, third, and fifth, so they just took up a bunch of points there. Um, so now are we going four to go or five to go? Well, um, but like, kind of going back to like Frankie's and you, what you guys are talking about about the teams. Um, like in a situation like this, like it it can be easy to get frustrated that maybe you or your team is not doing what you would like. But like on this this race, Butcher Box is playing it perfectly, and it's in a race it's like almost like hats off to them like they executed it the way they wanted to and like we just got to keep racing the race that we can with who we have left in the race and try to focus on that and not try to get demoralized that we don't have a guy up there in the breakaway right now but um is that alex now yeah alex going to four to go um but yeah it's like we all we all train super hard and want to win and uh we don't want to get mad at each other when when someone else has success. Right. What did they say? They say that uh, losing builds character. So tonight, this night, we, we you know, we, we built a little bit of character. Another building yeah, block. you watch a race like this, you know, and you watch, uh, you know, you watch how the season unfolded. And I know going into this season, it just made everybody hungrier, right? You guys were itching to come back. And obviously that's not where we all are right now. But to be able to watch these races and chat about them, uh, it's it's pretty satisfying to see, and it just makes me it makes me look forward to to when we can be out there doing this again, whenever that may be. I know you guys, uh, you know, ended the season satisfied with what you guys had done, but also super hungry for the coming season. So, what was your mindset as this race was finishing and as the season came to an end? Yeah, I mean, obviously. You're a little bummed that uh, the season's over and you just kind of uh, want to keep racing. And I feel like that's different for everyone where they are in their race season. But uh, it just adds a little fuel to the fire, especially over a long, cold winter. Uh, a lot of uh, indoor trainer rides to get ready for the 2020 season. It's like you kind of want to uh, start off where you left off as far as like fitness wise, because I mean, I feel like majority of us are are pretty fit at the last race of the season we've been racing all summer so um i mean th just even watching this just gives me a lot more motivation to uh even though right now motivation might be a little low but after watching this like uh makes me run or really really train hard and get ready for whenever the races are yeah. also another thing that i didn't realize is like alex is like just sitting off the front like five seconds yeah like for the last he's just like right there pouncing mode but 
That's impressive. Yeah, and as you're watching this, you know, as you're watching this, the viewer sees a rider who's five seconds up the road, and it doesn't look like that much of a gap. You know, they're like, wow, you know, why, why is he just hanging there? But in reality, this is a long race, and probably everybody who's in that group is just looking at that that gap, and it it looks. You know, it looks 10 times longer to anybody who's been working all night than to any of us who are watching it on the screen. And as a breakaway guy, you know that, right? I mean, you know that. If you're sitting there technically in no man's land, at this point, no man's land is probably second place on the night. Yeah, and then like two to like, go. like you said, everyone behind is like so full gas. And um, and then there's obviously someone's going to front and then they're they're going to pull off and there's going to be a little bit of a gap before who, someone else takes control of chasing this. And like um, with us not having uh, like fully organized or having the team right there at the end, like this is playing into Alex's uh, advantage. And now we have like anywhere from like three to four different teams at the front and it's just kind of uh, not very well organized. And so like I'd be be super super happy if i was in alex's position right now and just kind of keep driving and like i said before like he's going to be able to go through those corners so much smoother and uh and now uh here comes frank i mean he's only maybe 20 or 30 seconds off from lap in the field he's going into one to go here so this will That'd be, be an nice absolute <laughs> yeah that's an impressive ride third. Uh, so, when you, so when you saw Frank go, uh, go when you go. saw Frank go, you guys probably thought it was too early. When you saw the Butcher second move go and, and now I five seconds the off the front, to what go, was your mindset there? I think you guys were both up near the front when, uh, when Butch Box went and, and got that gap and kind of Ladies held it for the remainder of the race. But when you see something like that go, any move, not even necessarily that one, but any move that late in the game, do you do you, do you often assume that, that it's probably not going to stick? How do you approach that? I mean, I think I think any time a butcher box or any one solo rider, like a strong breakaway rider, goes off the front, we get a little bit nervous. And obviously, we would have loved to have been in that breakaway with Frank or uh, Alex there, butcher box. But maybe at I think that point of the race, it was like physically like. Ah, oh, that was a good move, but I just can't. Awesome. I can't go with that. Like, I have to yeah. recover next lap, or I'm not going to finish this race. Um, but right now, like, yeah, Frank's coming in, in solo to the finish right now um, with a really well-deserved win. Yeah, you can see the crowd here just going crazy. Yeah. And talk a little bit about that. So, when, what's that like? What's that like finishing down the, the finishing sheet with the crowd just just going crazy? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously, I mean, it's a little bittersweet of like uh, how the race overall ended up for us. But like, I mean, it's still so exciting to see anyone that knows you watching you and cheering on the team and just like being able to chit chat with uh, some of the other racers after the race just like to talk about what happened in the race and how it all went down and like how crazy hard it was and like uh i mean it's a really really cool atmosphere and like uh people coming up and taking pictures or asking you how the race went and i mean it's really really cool the cool down lap's the best giving high fives you have no soul whatsoever yeah, did you guys have energy to uh, to give a pretty good number of high fives still after this race? This race looks like my lucky guys. Yeah, I think that's I think that's required. I think you have to do a, a victory lap, even if you didn't win. I mean, just finishing that race on its own is a victory. Um, it says Travieso average 280 watts in the breakaway. That's average. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. That's what it takes. There we go. Now we know. Uh, well, I think I think that might be uh, that might be it. I don't know Again, when when Scott has this one ending. Uh, yeah, so and and I don't know I don't know, I don't know how it ended up charm. in the end, but uh, Bridger Box obviously here, took the overall win, but I still charm. think it was a close now finish. Like I still think we were pretty tight uh, first and second. We're going to do our yeah, and Owen was able to hang on to the yeah. uh, U25 jersey. So uh, we, it, it was a fantastic season for us. We had, we had a blast race, and obviously we would have liked to have 
taking Thanks, the team Mark, competition. But uh, I got some great photos of you guys being being sprayed by uh, by the guys on Butcher Box, and so I think they they got to return the favor um, yeah. in 2018. And you know, oh, and hopefully way, sooner or later somebody's going right to be here. spraying champagne on somebody else again, and I cannot wait for uh, for that day. So you know, with with that, uh, Scott, if you're still tuned in, checking in on us. Uh, can you let us know? Right, where is Frank? We're going to put uh, him ahead of uh, can you let us know the banner while the, uh, we're good to go. Great people here at uh, yeah, oh, okay. Mark Federal yeah. Credit Union get so, set up. What a battle between Butcher Box and Cliff Bar. And again, I think Butcher Box. Yeah, are the I mean, team. I think we're good here. It, the the podiums, you know, the podiums were were fine. They were exciting. They were fun to to be at. Uh, coming in, or, or are we in pretty good shape on the? Yeah, I think we're good. good. Hey. Hey, thanks to everybody who checked in with a question. Yeah, that helps thank a you. lot, keeps it rolling. And uh, right, USA Crips, podium. thanks a ton for organizing this. Podium. And Kevin and Connor, thanks a bunch we'll for, uh, for 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 doing this. It was sort of last you know last now. minute late notice, and I uh, really appreciate you guys stepping in to uh, to share your thoughts on on the race in Westchester. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, this was fun. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll see you guys out at a race soon. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, hey, thanks a lot, Scott. Really appreciate it. You all have a good evening. Yeah, you guys too. I see him. There he is. Well, Frank Travieso, how does that feel? Painful. Painful. But seriously, I mean, tell us a little bit about how it went down. My thought was is that as soon as the crash happened, you took advantage of the situation because you felt that Cliff Bar and Butcher Box were going to kind of see what was going on. Was that the case or was it just opportunity? No, I saw the Butcher Box I was going for the Prince. And then I saw Thomas Gibbon go for like the whole full lap, full gas for the print tool. So I just, I just going to sit behind them. As soon as Thomas Gibbon got out the front, I just going to attack because, you know, after that, nobody, nobody going to have enough power to chase right away. I knew they're going to chase later. So I just feel great out there and just ride my pace and was buying time, buying time, buying time. Soon I see like 15 lap to go. I just put the hammer down and say, now I'm dying here or you know, I don't go back. So tell us about the crowd. I mean, the crowd was just louder and louder and louder. Did that help fuel you for the, past, for the last few laps? Yeah, absolutely. That's why I make the last lap, give a high five to almost everybody around the whole entire course, because they are the one pushing me out there. Thank you so much to cheer me on. And there, you know, you guys already like, feel like you are playing with me out there. Thank you. And how does it feel to win here in Westchester for the benchmark Iron Hill Twilight? You know, these are... Uh, it's one of my favorite races, you know. I've been trying to win this race for years after years. I've been trying and trying to be on the podium many times. But, you know, I never get it right. So, the, today, so nobody can come around me, you know. I'm going by myself. No one can pass me. <laughs> well, your winner, I guess I truly am a good luck charm to you. But your winner, ladies and gentlemen, the 2019 Iron Hill Benchmark Federal Criterium Championship, Frank Travieso for EDA. Thank you so much for everybody. All right, we're going to get set up for the podium. We'll tie a bow on this thing and head on over to Iron Hill. Feel free to make your way into the street, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do our podium presentation.
And here to present our podium, we've got some pretty big dignitaries. We've got Mark Yoder, President and CEO, Greater Chamber of Westchester. Dan Michonne, President and CEO, Rebecca Worthington. Benchmark Federal Credit Unions, we got Kevin Finn, Founder and Chairman of the Board of Iron Hill Brewery, Restaurant Jamie Hensley. Student Recruiter, a women's basketball team, Jamie Hensley. And of course, with the help of our podium girls that have made the presentation to our winners. Again, this is the last race of the USA Crits Championship Series. You guys got the Super Bowl of the USA Crits Championship Series, and Frank Travieso put a fantastic bow on this entire season by a huge win. He actually came out of retirement. He was done and dusted. Came out, got skinny again, eating lettuce and shaving his legs, back winning bike races again. All right, we are going to do our podium presentation for our women and then our men here for our benchmark Federal Credit Union Twilight. 